Hey guys, Holly here and I'm with Lane and this is week four of my WBFF Worlds Contest Prep Series. Tongue tied. This is wonderful. I can speak. One, one and a half take Holly. Speak. One and a half take Holly. It's the bracers. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, lovely bracers. So, how'd this week go? It was a diet break, right? Bloody awesome. God, food's good. <laughs> it's so funny to hear your, like, your, your synopsis after you've looked at the overall data versus, like, you day well, to day. Like mid oh, the this prep is shit. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not losing any body fat. Ugh. This prep is just awful. You know, and then, and then, like sometimes you'll catch yourself and like, oh man, I've gained some muscle. <laughs> kind of peak it's so around. like there's highs and lows. It's really interesting because I think it's the worst part of prep. Yeah. It really is. Some of the days I feel like my GI like is completely and solely oh, responsible were... for my entire mood. Like, yeah, you were pretty preggers the other day. If, yeah, there's been a couple of instances, and I think I might have actually had some gluten the other night mm -hmm. because I. Honestly, had I wish I had to taken a photo because yeah, I would. I actually am not sure it was gluten because you you got into my ice cream with ha which has the glutens in it, and that didn't that didn't blow you up. No, well I don't know what it was. I really have no yeah. idea. I wonder if so. Anyway, so yeah, the other night she had something that react caused some kind of spontaneous reaction, and yeah. she became acutely pregnant with a. There is a gas baby. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what I think. Um, I have noticed that um, there's a couple of things, a couple of times during the week where I would have far more like obvious like GI symptoms, and uh, it's been when I've been making lattes. So I have this coffee machine at home, and have been making coffees. I was like, okay, I'm going to check the ingredients with the milks and things. There's, I don't get the same effect or GI um, symptoms when I have a, a smoothie. So mm. I don't think that it was the protein powder and I don't think it was the milk. What I have been putting in is, um, it's a Starbucks sugar-free vanilla syrup, ah. um, which I add to my coffee. And <clears throat> I took a look at the ingredients and out of, of all things, it contains exanthem gum. Mm. So I do wonder whether like, I have a bit of a threshold where if I... I can have a couple of things throughout the day which contain artificial sweetener. So, like my protein powders all have it Xanthan in there. Xanthan gum is a binder. I know. It's a binder. But though. have you seen how that responds? Like when you put it in yeah, food, it, like so it's, it's just like it blows up like gas and it like stretches. It's just crazy. Yeah, it has so it has um, binding properties. Right. So basically, they use it as a thickener mm -hmm. for stuff. And um, yeah, it like you said, you put a gram in, in water and it expands. So yeah. I'm just like wondering whether that is something that like it kind of sends me over my threshold for uh, sweeteners and um, it's just something that I well, think I'm going to have to kind of pay close attention to if I want to go symptom free. <laughs> besides that, you had some, well let's talk about did, uh, what happened with your weight during the diet break. Okay, uh, so a couple of days it did kind of shoot up over 68. So when I finished my diet break, my weight was at, or the average weekly weigh-in was 67.7. Um, I'd gotten down to as low as 67.3 by the end of my three weeks of dieting. So, but you were 67.1 this morning. Yeah, so one day after. My, that's one day after. So diet, it's likely that any weight you put on was just water. And actually you had yourself assessed yeah, at USF. So we went down to USF this week and uh, redid all my measurements and my uh, resting metabolic rate, like everything. <laughs> and yeah, we actually were able to show that, uh, I think it was 96 um, pounds of my body weight was to, like body water. And then, no, that's not right. No. I take that back. Anyway, whatever the measurements were between weeks, um, I'm just making up numbers right now. Good but thing, there was about um, a three, like three whole number difference between my um, previous week's body wa body water and then this week's body water. So basically, the difference in body weight you saw, which was about 200 grams, mm -hmm. was accounted for by the increase in body water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll just go with weight because I don't know what the measurement was that I was looking at. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't, but you had your body, your body fat done. That didn't change. You went down by 0.1%, which is not a significant difference. Yeah, that's great. Um, and your weight went up a little bit. So again, it was likely water. And that shows because your total body water increased. Yeah. Um, 
Now, what's really interesting is you actually saw in one week of a diet break a significant increase in your resting metabolic rate. Yeah, so we tested that obviously at the end of my diet break and my, um, my resting metabolic rate was sitting at about 15.25, I think it was. So like three weeks of dieting, I had like a 250 calorie drop um, since the beginning. And then obviously seven days with a diet break uh, where my calories were about 530 higher than my dieting weeks. Uh, it shot up to 16.25, so it was about 100 uh, calorie so 130 increase. calorie increase. Right. Um, so that was uh, something to note. That's which, really cool. W yeah, really interesting to see. And we, we kind of would expect that just based on some of the literature that we had seen. Yeah, but I don't know that anybody's actually showed that. I mean, maybe they showed that in the, the Matador study. Yeah. I have to go back and look at the paper. Now, the interesting thing is, if, we, if we're doing math, right? So you were eating over your diet calories mm -hmm. by... 500. Uh, 500 something uh, but you get but you didn't really you didn't gain any body fat mm -mm. Uh, but your rest of the metabolic weight only went up by 123 calories mm -hmm. now I guess one way to explain that is okay well you were already in a deficit previously mm -hmm. right so who knows quite what the deficit was um, but then that increase in metabolic rate probably took care of some of that, mm -hmm. but also what they show is when you increase energy intake, your need increases. Your your mm -hmm. non-exercise adaptive thermogenesis also increases, so you fidget more, yeah. you move more, um, you probably had a little bit more exercise intensity. And yeah, I you did may think have, my, my, I enjoyed my training last week a lot more than I did the previous week. Yeah. I was a bit more energized, I guess. And then your 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 actually they show your sleeping metabolic rate can change too. Right. So all of those factors add up, and I think some people who don't understand energy balance, they don't understand that. They think of calories in and calories out as independent variables, mm -hmm. but that's not true. Calories in affects calories out. So when you drop calories, your body responds by mm -hmm. reducing metabolic rate over time. When you increase calories, your body responds by increasing metabolic rate over time. And the other thing that was really interesting as well was we got my uh, leptin tested from baseline to through to the three weeks of dieting and that decreased significantly during that diet period. So I think when I started this prep, um, I was sitting at about 3.9 uh, as my baseline uh, leptin. Three weeks dieting dropped down to 1.9. Wow, so it's a, a almost in half, yeah. actually less than half. Real refresher for those who, who you have a video on leptin, which we would recommend going and checking out. Yep. Um, leptin is kind of your body's uh, hormone, it's kind of your thermostat. Mm -hmm. So when you diet, uh, it's kind of like if the, if in here, if we have the temperature set at 75 and it starts to go up to 76, the air conditioner kicks on, pushes it back down to 75. Mm -hmm. If it starts to go down to 74, the heater kicks on, bumps it back up to 75. Mm -hmm. Leptin acts in the same way that when you diet and you start to lose weight, Leptin is trying to keep you at what we call body fat set point, trying to keep each individual fat, si fat, fat cell at a certain size. And as those fat cells shrink, they secrete less leptin. That causes your metabolic rate to go down and mm -hmm. your hunger to go up. Mm -hmm. So not only are you burning less calories, you're hungrier. When you overeat, leptin goes up as the fat cells expand mm -hmm. and you get less hungry mm -hmm. and you burn more calories. So to kind of bring you back. Now, What's interesting is that leptin doesn't just respond to fat cell size. It also responds to short-term energy flux across the fat cell. Mm -hmm. So meaning that in the short term, if you overfeed, even if you've been dieting, you can acutely raise leptin. Now, do they do your leptin at the, well, you don't have those results back. No, I think I'll have those in a couple of days. So, so that'll be interesting to see. I think we will see a bump in leptin. Mm -hmm. I think you, yes, I think you will see a mm. small, but significant increase in leptin. So, so we'll see what happens. So stay tuned for that. Um, I think that kind of takes care of the, the long and short of things. We're, we're about to get back into mm -hmm. a, di so a three-week diet period. Yep. Do we want to go up and look at your data and see what we're going to do next? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go and set my macros for uh, this week four of dieting, I guess. Sounds good. Okay, so this highlighted area we are looking at is my diet break from Monday the 22nd to the 29th. Um, you can see here, I started the diet break at about 67.3 kilos. I stuck up to about 68, and I dare say I was probably a little bit higher here on uh, Thursday. Um, but overall, I've kind of kept my weekly average at 67.8 for the week, which is really positive. 
And it's only 200 grams more than your average from the previous week. Right, which is really it's perfect. I would probably be worried if I had a... I was a little bit... I must say I was nervous going into the diet break because it was a fairly aggressive increase in calories again. So, I mean, it is it is mentally challenging to go, all right, I've just done really well for three weeks and now I'm going back up to high calories again. I'm going to gain all this weight back. But uh, usually we're pretty good at math and the math don't lie. <laughs> so... Well, you've been, you've, I think you've had more better progress the first four weeks of this diet than you did your last prep. Much better. So what is super interesting is now that I've started my uh, contest prep, let's have a look at my protein intakes for this week. I've just highlighted oh it here on the screen. So I hit my calories um, perfectly for this diet break, but my protein intakes are you through to get your shit the together. roof. So, <laughs> <laughs> but this is part of, partly your habits this because is, you're. I was just going to say this is what um, this is a really really good evidence of my ha- my behaviors, long term behaviors, kind of transferring over into this diet, which is I don't think it's a terrible thing. Um, so it, basically, when you're in diet mode, you're choosing a lot of high-protein, low-carb sources. So you just ate more of those. Yeah, I really did, which I think isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, no, but if you do look at the, the literature on leptin and whatnot, um, it's most affected by carbohydrate. Exactly. So you probably want to try and keep that protein a little bit more down. So I think what you probably need to do is choose smaller portion sizes mm. with your protein. Yeah. Um, and I think that will help. I think the other thing is as well, I tend to, once I'm given the flexibility with greater carbohydrates and fats, um, I do find it much harder to stick to small portion sizes. I just find that it is easier for me to maintain my calories when I have protein as the food of choice. It's like give an inch, I take a mile kind of thing when it comes to carbs and fats. I don't trust myself with those really high uh, carbohydrate foods, so I think it probably at no, this stage I, I wasn't think, a bad thing. Yeah, I, I think that it, it's better than it's been. It's better than it's been. <laughs> right. So I'm just somebody who I've never struggled like you. Like if I put targets on a page, I hit them within five grams almost yeah. every time. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's like a little bit different looking at it from my perspective because I'm like, oh, I just eat like less chicken or whatever it is. But I also eat differently than you. You cook meals yep. you see what i do i just cook up a bunch of chicken breasts lane eats the most disgusting food when <laughs> i just couldn't do it honestly if i if i had to if i ate i'm like ronnie indiv- coleman indiv- i got the foods he's like oh i've got seven grams of fat left mm, i'm gonna drink some oil <laughs> <laughs> no i'm like ronnie coleman i got the chicken breasts out I'm, put, like, no, I'm putting the barbecue just... sauce on it you know you know, every day got chicken. Yeah, I just can't do that. Chicken, I, chicken, I enjoy chicken. food too much to destroy it by just eating things in isolation. No, I mean there were certainly been times where. But you're a you're a food culture person, and I I just don't. I yeah. I want to, if I'm going to do something, I want to win. Right. Uh, not that you don't. I know, but I'm here to lose. <laughs> Not that you know, but I, but I just don't have that. To, to me, I'm still compliant in my mind. But keep in mind, and... you were always cooking before you got into this kind of stuff. Right. I got into bodybuilding when I was 19, when I lived in a dormitory and had no money. Yeah. So I was eating cottage cheese out of a can, yeah. tuna with mustard just in it. Just whatever you can afford. Whatever I could afford. Right. And those kind of foods were what I was used to, so yeah. everything tastes good to me. <laughs> Well, looking at my compliance... Wow, look at your compliance to protein. I know, I have 121% of my protein compliance. Um, And then, obviously, my carbs and fats have come down um, as a result. But then my compliance to calories this week were a little bit low. So you can see here, my overall weekly target uh, was 2023. And I came in at an average of 1979. So... Um, yeah, a little bit under this week, and again, um, it, it's still back close to my predicted maintenance, but it might be another reason why I didn't put on uh, more weight, perhaps. I don't but think 50 calories made that 50 big calories is Actually, it's minimal. 44 calories, so that could easily be accounted for in lab- like labeling errors and whatnot. So it's, right, and you would have just as much, yeah, yeah. So I actually reckon I probably was pretty dead on, because I don't know that I put everything in perfectly okay. like I have made a bit of an effort to make sure even if I'm standing in the fridge and I want to eat a strawberry I'm like mm. no and that's important and Go I told you that it, like yeah you know. well that, but that was that's a real downfall for you mm. 
like yes. during prep, especially you snack. And I even, I saw you the other day when you were cooking, yeah. you were taking like licks out of uh, Greek yogurt and I said something to you. Oh yeah, but I'm you, recording it. So every but see, time I didn't I, know. Yeah. I didn't know. Every time I put something in my mouth, I will try to estimate what I've just put in my mouth. <laughs> but, so, but I probably, I what, need to. What the macros on, can I say it? No, you can can't. I say it? Don't you. <laughs> Please don't be saying <laughs> A good habit to be in would be to weigh before you eat. If you do, especially if you're yeah. tracking and you don't know what's in something, always weigh it first so that you can actually make a good approximate. But I think I'm getting pretty good at that. No, I think weighing it, take it, just subtracting it out before right. you eat it, and that way it's done. Yeah. So looking so. at my cardio this week, obviously a big drop from previous weeks. Um, so it was a, a diet break. I dropped back to 190 minutes of low intensity steady state. So it was just all walking. You did get that hit session in though. I finally got my hit session in, which I was super happy about. And I got my five weight sessions in, which So is... overall your expenditure was probably more okay. greater. Yeah, compared to my diet in weeks. Yeah. And that, but that was actually not a bad thing for the diet break. That's what I had forecast. It's yeah. just I wasn't able to get on my training in the yeah. previous few weeks because I was so busy. Okay. So what are we week. doing this week? Um, so we are now into moving into week four of dieting or week five of the total prep. Um, so I've uh, preemptively thrown some targets in. I don't think I need to get super aggressive um, with this next drop. I'm hoping that I will be able to get a little bit more now that I'm actually focused on getting all my activity in because that was the biggest problem um, in the first three weeks of those um, these dieting weeks here, I just couldn't get my training volumes up. So I think week uh, moving into week four, um, things are consistent again. I don't foresee any reasons why I can't get those in. And this is pretty aggressive, but we also decided that we're being much more aggressive on the front end because... I would rather be ready early than yeah. have to grind it. We end. also have um, our wedding coming up in yeah. June. So yeah. that's like we wanted you to be in a good place. So that you hopefully could enjoy that a little bit more yes. and not be so restricted. Yeah, that's down here in diet week nine. So I'll mm -hmm. have to do some planning to get some calories. <laughs> Just imagine when we're going out for a bachelorette and I'm like, oh, I'm not drinking tonight. <laughs> anyway, so average weekly calorie target is 1481 this week. So I've come down by about 100 calories from uh, my previous weeks of dieting. Um, I'm choosing to keep a really high day in there because we do have a lot of um, social stuff, um, guests coming in and out. We've got the new podcast, so it's kind of nice to be able to have some flexibility on at least one day of the week if I want to go and eat something good and not be like, oh, I've got to order a chicken. So <laughs> I've kept in a 210 gram carb day and a 65 gram fat day, but then that's going to make my weekly targets a little more challenging. But I mean, I like cooking and I can pretty much prepare. Yeah, that's near like... In the prep macros for the last time. That's going to be a rough... No, it was pretty low last time as well. It's only 18 grams difference. But yeah, this is going to require some thought. So I think yeah. my strategy um, for this is that I'm still fasting in the morning. If I'm training before 11, I don't worry about eating. And then I kind of have my first meal around uh, midday. And that's usually a protein only or very low carb, like under 15 grams of carbohydrate. Um, and then I kind of spread those remaining 110 grams of, uh, or it's probably going to be about 100 grams of carbs left. Um, I'll split those up into like three meals of 30, or it might be two meals at 20 each, and then I've got like 50 grams leeway at the end of the day if I want mm -hmm. to have a, a carb source, like a, a good serving size of carbs. So that's my strategy for that. My fats are pretty low. Um, I'm probably only going to take up. You're not going to be able to take in any. No deliberate fat fats. Sources, so yeah. this is just going to be foods that their secondary source of uh, macronutrient is fat. So it might be that I'm having like, I don't know, ground beef or beef mince. There's going to be some fats, like five grams of fats coming through from four ounces. And then it might be, I don't know, what other foods that I have that have fat in it? Just a mixture of sauces and things like that. Um, you know, the, the dribs and drabs. So, yeah. Cool. I think that's it. Why don't we, time to get after it. What do you think? Wrap it up? Yeah, I'm already really happy with today. I've already dropped like to 67.1 today. Lock it in. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, to week four of my uh, contest prep series. If you've got questions, please ask. Uh, leave something uh, in the comment section below. Uh, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Uh, hopefully you can find all the stuff that we put out there uh, super valuable and you can apply it to your own circumstances. Follow him, bio lane. Or not. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>
Like our stuff, share our stuff, buy our stuff. Get out of here. <laughs>